cell has been opened for patient 4, 5, 8, 1. You are permitted 10 minutes with the patient. Under no circumstances should you exceed a 10-minute conversation with patient 4, 5, 8, 1. Thank you for visiting Cerebius Mental Institution. Newcomer. Must be that time of year, isn't it? I don't suppose you've come to keep me company so close to my anniversary out of pity, hmm? No, oh, you're probably here to write a paper or better understand a murder by some deranged lunatic. Maybe morbid curiosity got the better of you. I told you ten minutes, right? Did they say why? They didn't tell you anything, did they? Probably another experiment. Well, if you're here to listen, I can entertain plenty. I don't have a name anymore. Not a real one. Only the one they gave me. The Honey Creeper. It's a double entendre, I think. Named after my breed of finch, but also... What it's like to speak with me. At first, it's sweet, enticing. But gradually, the nature of the conversation becomes... Uh, diabetic. You have a sneaking feeling something is wrong, sick, but you continue anyway. It eats at you from the inside. Your blood cuts at you like it carries shards of glass, and eventually each digit of your extremities rots and falls away. And then you're gone. <laughs> Sorry. Morbid. Still want to listen? I'm in here because I've killed. Frequently, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Please, don't mistake me as someone who lacks control over his faculties. I actually came here by choice. Society tends to frown on people like me. Call us crazy, demented. But you see how naive that is, don't you? It's easier to take someone abnormal and lock them in a tiny box so you don't have to deal with them. Because it's something they refuse to understand. I don't do what I do on impulse. It's not some instinctual drive nor a primal evolution trying to express itself. I didn't snap or lose control or fall whim to ambition. Everything I did was carefully considered. See, that's, that's the unsettling part to the civilized world. That I'm not some caveman in modern times, but just as sane and rational as the rest of them. The killing is perfectly reasoned. It's a calling of pride, I suppose. We parade about convinced that there's this higher calling, like the fact that we can think I am and assume it means something, that life has a purpose. Sure, we write things down, etch rocks and trees with signs for enlightened position, but it all fades. Even our own memories erode. I can't remember the name of my first kill any more than you can remember what you had for breakfast two weeks ago. But I do remember the important details. Do you know what finches like us do? We talk. We socialize. I never cared for it. Too much energy to expend on the conversations are often so quick and so shallow. 
The finches gather for talks every now and again, and I was incensed by the offer of free food. I spoke to him, and he introduced himself in a way that made my brain gloss over. One of those people. But there's this glint in people's eyes when they haven't been whittled down by the erosion of life experiences. That little sparkle that says, I have a purpose, it's out there somewhere. <laughs> it was briefly encouraging to see when I spoke to him. But the more I heard his story, the more I realized not a syllable of it was original. College, no clear direction, no prospects. He spent much of his spare time collecting colorful bits of plastic and racking up numbers on video games. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? That's not to say he was devoid of interest. He clicked his tongue when in approval of a topic, used the back of a key to clean his nails before he started a conversation to be presentable. And his neck was approximately two inches too long, which gave him that particularly lanky, malnourished appearance, like he was still learning how to feed himself now that he's left home. <laughs> I thought about it for days, weeks after our first incursion. His life was terribly predictable from this point on. He'll earn his degree, it'll go nowhere, and he'll spend the rest of his life trading scraps of paper for fleeting ticks of dopamine, eating, producing waste, eventually passing without memory. You could think of it as a uh, consensual purgatory. How could life have evolved to such mediocrity if it had a point? That's why I invited him to a night on the town, a party to condense what could have been another 40 years of blandness into a single evening of celebration. Ah, oh, we drank, spent some time at Cirque du Soleil, and naturally he made some incorrect assumptions about my friendly demeanor. It was exhausting, but it was supposed to be. Because at the end of the evening, between a corridor of nondescript brickwork, he craned his head back and I spent a few tender moments feeling the blood pass over my beak as it perforated an artery on that malnourished neck. It was quiet. Dare I say, grateful. Of course, disposal was a simple enough, positioned conveniently by a drain with large enough slats to trickle the liquid through, strategically positioned by a hydraulic dumpster approximately four hours before the garbage truck would be around it. But such things aren't important. You don't ask what became of the skin after you've eaten a burger, do you? <sighs> Fine. I'll get the obvious out of the way. No, I do not drink the blood. It's unsanitary. I, 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 I just don't get it, honestly. Everyone goes on and on and on and on and on and on about the blood. Oh, the blood, the blood. Oh, to know how much blood is cited in literature. Attaching the soul, the spirit, royalty, loyalty, rituals, even powers to the self-aggrandizing insistence that what courses through us is important. Do you know what blood is? It's, it's platelets. It's water. It's just water. And yet, we glorify it deify it with such reverence that the moment we see it on another planet we hope maybe we'll find life there too. <sighs> We're all sacks of water. Billions of years from now, will the wealthy be remembered? The activists, <laughs> the spiritually ascended, will the water that we once were remember the purpose it fulfilled? Or will the most that's commemorated be the shape of the bowls they ate from or the mangled femur the rocks petrified eons after they were buried in ash? <laughs> the 
that's, that's the joke. No matter how much importance we attach to people, places, and things, the only real aspect it can ever retain is its impermanence. It made me realize the aimless college boy, the entrepreneur, the accomplished surgeon, are all varying degrees of the same exercise and futility. Some are just better at obscuring that fact. No matter how much they struggle, claw into the earth, erect monuments to their existence, it all disappears. Even our time together is destined to be forgotten. So I see life, and I end it. If only because all that water could probably, perhaps hopefully, one day take the shape of something that has a point. <laughs> they keep me here because while I may be tidy in my work, it's scandalous, but a bit more practical than they care to admit. They have plenty of things going on in this facility they'd rather keep under wraps. So once in a while, they allow me to have a visitor. If they leave any shorter than 10 minutes, they've been sufficiently scared. But longer? I mentioned that conversations grow weary to me. Socializing is something I find deeply exhausting because the more I speak to someone, the more I connect to them, the more I empathize with that eventual futility, the decades that you'll inevitably waste trying to find a point to all this. After 10 minutes, I've made up my mind, and my wardens know better than to deny me a mercy kill. never did get your name. Do you know what I like about you? You listen. You don't argue with me. You don't try my patience with moral debate. Hmm. Maybe deep down, you see it too. So I'll let you leave. Maybe our conversation will nestle between your ears for a while. Or maybe you'll discard it and prove me wrong. Either way, I'll be curious if you decide to return. Enjoy your life, or at least the fleeting amount you have. Ah. Close the door on the way out. They wouldn't want me wandering.